This learning object is a production of Abu Dhabi Men's College, Center of Excellence for ICT and Learning Technology. Good day, everybody. No, these are not my lungs. These are artificial lungs that are made specifically for educational purposes for this lecture. Uh, basically, we've made them to uh, explain to you the pathophysiology of pneumothorax and hemothorax. We will be talking basically about two types of pneumothoraces, tension pneumothorax and open pneumothorax. And we will be discussing the major underlying factors that affects the inflation and deflation of lungs. What keeps your lung inflated and what causes your lungs to deflate? Basically, if we understand the uh, 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 intrapleural pressure, or if we understand the forces that create the pressure inside the pleural space, we will be able to understand and appreciate the importance of that pressure in keeping your lungs inflated. Well, first of all, let's start by uh, uh, talking a little bit about the great anatomy of the chest wall. If you look at the chest, you, you can see ribs, sternum, but what's so uh, uh, amazing in the chest cage is its natural elastic recoil to uh, uh, fold inward. If you can see, if I, if, to fold, sorry, to fold outward. If I split the sternum, these two ribs, for example, during open heart surgery, they will unfold outward. They are kept in this position because the sternum holds, the, holds them like that in this position. This is uh, very specific for the chest. If, and as I, again, because of its bony structure, because of its bony configuration, and because of the muscle that cover the chest. So the chest has a, a natural tendency to uh, recoil outward. Whereas the lungs, on the other hand, they have the natural tendency to recoil or collapse inward towards the helum or the point at which they bifurcate. Well, this has a tendency to fold or to recoil outward. The lungs have the tendency to recoil inward. These two opposing forces create another force between them, a negative force, negative pressure force, which I call the intrapleural pressure, which must be all the time equal to minus four to minus 10 millimeter mercury. In certain situations, of course, abnormal situation, if that pressure becomes positive, if that pressure becomes positive, the lung cannot be inflated and you can't breathe effectively and consequently the lung will deflate because the lung is used to negative pressure to aid it in expansion. If the pressure in the intrapleural space was positive, instead of aiding and helping the lung in expansion, it will push the lung and prevent it from expanding. I will explain this anal analogy in further details. The lung itself is covered by a nice dress, which I call the visceral pleura. On the inner side of the chest wall, I have another dress, which we call the parietal pleura. These two dresses, or these two layers, are attached to each other by a thin film of fluid. I'll show you how. Let's say, for example, that this is the visceral pleura that covers the lung. And this is the parietal pleura that covers the inner side of the chest wall. As I said, these two are attached to each other by a thin film of fluid that lubricates because these two membranes are going to move over each other. To, to minimize friction and consequently tissue damage, I have this thin fluid, thin layer of fluid. Well, if one membrane moves upward, and in this situation it's going to be the parietal pleura as it is attached to the chest wall, so when you breathe the chest wall will move upward, consequently it will drag with the, the visceral pleura and that will facilitate the process of breathing. First, parietal with the chest wall, then the visceral will follow. 
Having the visceral membrane following the parietal membrane, it will entice, it will help the lung in getting expanding. So this is basically the process in case the pressure inside the pleural space was negative. Now, as long as the pressure inside the pleural space is negative, normal breathing will take place. If for a certain reason, and one of these reasons could be a knife, stabbing your chest or stabbing the patient's chest. If for a certain reason the uh, integrity of the chest wall is breached, first of all the parietal pleura will be torn and probably this knife will go all the way to damage the visceral pleura and the lung itself. Now, as we all know that air takes the path of least resistance. If we go back to the normal breathing physiology or pattern, air goes through the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, left main bronchus, right main bronchus, and then the lungs. The air has to overcome the airway resistance to get to the lungs. In this situation, because I have an open wound in the chest where I have no resistance, air will take the path of wreath resistance. So instead of passing through the nose, air will pass through the wound. So air will communicate. The barometric pressure will be equal to the uh, 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 pressure inside uh, uh, the, 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 the thoracic cavity. Instead of having negative pressure, now the thoracic cavity has a, a, a pressure that is equal to the barometric pressure. And consequently, it will push it will push this, pr this pressure that is created because of the stab wound will push the trachea, will push the heart, the heart, and if it was high enough, it might push the other lung. So, I have a wound that is communicating with the atmosphere. Air goes in on inhalation, goes out on exhalation. Because air is communicating, or because I have communication between the thoracic cavity and the atmosphere, I call it communicating or open pneumothorax. What is so special about this kind of pneumothorax is that it, it, it sucks air, because when you breathe in, you tend to create a high negative pressure. So air will be sucked through that opening in the wall instead of going through the nose. Air will go in, air will go out. What you need to do is you need to reattend the negative pressure inside the pleural space or to minimize this uh, 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 communication. So basically what you do is you cover the opening. I'll tell you later on about this, uh, uh, the characteristic of the dressing of this kind of uh, injuries. You can't just cover it like that. You need to keep in mind that you need to cover it, but you don't need to close it from all sides for, uh, uh, because you don't want to create a one-way valve. I'll explain that in a little while. Now, sometimes, sometimes, in certain kind of chest injuries, uh, you know, remember in communicating chest injury, I focus and I underline the word communicating because air was going in and out. And I made that on purpose because now I will be talking about the type of uh, pneumothorax where air gets in but never gets out. How? I'll show you how. If, for example, you get a, a, a stab injury uh, with, an, with a small, usually it's with small instruments where uh, this instrument breach or breaks the continuity of the chest wall. Let's, for example, imagine that this is the chest wall. If a knife or, uh, 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 or a sharp nail or any sharp instrument breaks the continuity of the wall of the chest, of the chest wall or of the parietal pleura, uh, uh, the, the, the parietal pleura uh, uh, changes its shape from continuous to disrupted but the disruption will become like that. So basically what happens is on inhalation, the valve or this created entity will widens. 